What is up, everybody? Happy Friday. I'm so glad to see you that you've tuned in. I see that there's at least 500 of you guys waiting to tune in. I don't think you're here to see me. You're here to learn from our guests on today's show. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a 3D poster. And there's a little hint in the background there. And if you're not familiar with my guest today, you probably have seen some of his work somewhere because I've been referencing his work for some time long before we've reached out to him. Check out his beautiful work, taking beautiful 3D geometric shapes and integrating them into these wonderful designs and posters, very minimalistic in their nature, very subdued color palette, just gorgeous rendering. Look at this. Mm. That's awesome. You know what's even cooler, Jonah? What's that? You can actually even buy these prints and hang them up inside your home or your office. And I think I need to get some prints myself. Oh, please. These comps. Look at these, dude. Look at this. I might just steal those and put them in mine. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know this, but he also runs a full service design studio in Pristina, Pristina, Kosovo. Hopefully I said that right. I feel like I'm going to be butchering a lot of words today. And he's also worked with clients like Microsoft, TEDx, Toyota, Jaguar, Land Rover, just to name a few. If you guys go to his website, if you're just joining us, you don't know what's up, go to deepyellow.net. That's deep yellow.net and you can see some of his work i'm going to switch over to this jonah if you can just help me show some of this jonah right mm -hmm. there we go really look i'm going to click on this identity system check this out guys. oh it's not showing your website or whatever it's showing your screen or your second display oh i see i see okay so we'll, we'll cancel that for right now we'll go back to this i'll deal with that later but you can see his work here i just really like the geometric simplicity the clean, clean layout, just beautiful stuff. And this is the identity system I wanted to show you, but I hadn't mirrored my screen properly. Okay, you know who we're talking to today? We're talking to Nurtil Muhajiri. And you guys can go to deepyellow.net or follow him on Instagram at Deep Shape. Nurtil, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, Nurtil. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having me in the show. Man, you are super pro and you've prepared for this. So I love this. And I just want to whet the appetite of everybody tuning in. This is not one of those super talky ones. We're, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to find a little bit about the man behind the work and his studio, how he does what he does. And there's wonderful resources he's he shared with everybody. If you guys go check out his website, but we're also going to get to see you design and build a poster live. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Basically, I'm very excited to share my process and creative thinking through uh, 3ds max and in photoshop so oh. we'll go through we'll go through that okay so 3d studio max are you using any kind of special rendering engine yeah i'm using v-ray v-ray okay that's a popular engine for mm -hmm. rendering that yeah. works with a lot of software actually so before we talk about this one project, and I saw it on your website, and I'm going to get to it in a second, I want to get a little bit about your background. You're a man of mystery because I'm trying to find information about you. It's very hard to find anything about you. Tell me a little bit about your background. What did you study? How did you get into doing what it is that you do today? Uh, first of all, I was uh, uh, a kid with a dream to be an architect. And oh. I studied architect in high school and later in the university. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I was working as a graphic designer. Like uh, I was doing both of them. And the rendering part that is connected to Deep Shape now was early on my career, like an architect when I did renderings and stuff. And later on, later on, I continued my career in graphic design. So I stopped working in architecture because graphic design work was suiting me more. Mm. And now everything is connected. So I'm connecting dots with the experience that I have in architecture and graphic design now with Deep Shape. Do you miss any part of the architecture that you studied? Uh, I, I don't miss that all because in, right now my girlfriend is running, she is running a studio, architecture studio. So I'm always helping uh, with rendering and architecture ideas and stuff so i got back into it well i think i have a few friends who are architects they're going to be very excited about tuning in seeing you going from the architecture side to the graphic side because usually i'm always talking about graphic design as it relates to architecture okay now i want to get into this one project because I, I saw it on your site tell me about the microsoft project what is this all about yeah well 
this is the mo- the biggest project that I had with Deep Shape. Mm-hmm. So Deep Shape is a project that it, I'm doing these shapes for three years now. And kind of this Microsoft project was the biggest opportunity that I have. And and uh, the, the idea was that Microsoft reached me out, one of the creative directors of Microsoft. We were liking each other's work in, in Instagram. And, and he had an this opportunity to do some uh, geometric shapes or a language, more of a language of Microsoft Azure AI, like Microsoft Artificial Intelligence. Mm-hmm. So these shapes are connected more to developers and how they do stuff. And, and this is more of a language that we did. Mm-hmm. So you actually got a client lead from your Instagram account? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Everyone is asking me how do, where did you get this client? So right. basically, Instagram is is the most uh, community stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you get most of your job leads from Instagram? Not mostly, but uh, Deep Shape related works I got mostly from Instagram. But mm-hmm. now Microsoft, this is going to to uh, give me more opportunities and more clients, I think. I think so too. And if you guys are admiring this work, go check out his Instagram. It's at Deep Shape. And maybe this time we should get a little bit into your poster process because I think we're going to learn a lot of stuff from you. So perhaps it's time for me to stop sharing and jump into it. But before I do, before I do that, I want to let everybody know he's a very generous guy. He is. Nerto is a very generous guy. If you guys go to deepyellow.net, there are a bunch of mockups that you can download that he's he's prepared for you totally for the amazing price of free. Free. And if you're loving the artwork, you can go to redbubble.com. We'll drop the links in the description below and you guys can go check out his work there and, and purchase a couple of prints. All right, let's 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 stop this and I will turn over the show to you. Okay, I start sharing my screen now. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and Joe and I got my other screen ready now, just in case we need it. So we are seeing my screen. We are. We see this beautiful okay. paper background. Yeah, it's fresh. <laughs> and we'll start with 3ds Max. Okay. I have, I have uh, my uh, the latest version of mm-hmm. 3ds Max, and we we are going to be playing uh, with uh, F letter. So I wanted to to decide to do something with with the future. I love so, that. Yeah. So you guys will be more connected, and we are going to do this together. All right. Now, what kind so of what got you inspired on? was was the future logo. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. say. Okay, it was this F letter, this quarter of a circle. So okay. I was inspired by this one, and and maybe we're going to do a lot of exploration in that shape. Is is quarter of a circle? Okay. Okay. Just a second. Okay. So. Uh, we we'll, we'll, we will not go into details, but we will we are going to share more of the creative process. All right. And how how I do uh, these shapes and the lighting and shadows and the the position of the cameras and all this stuff. So we are going to create a tube. And how do I get rid of the zoom all of your cameras i don't know but we're seeing your screen oh, okay okay you don't worry I about that. that yeah I, I minimize that okay so this is the 3ds max basically it's mm-hmm. pretty good solver on the right side you have all of the uh, create panel where you can create uh shapes simple shapes that i start working usually so for now we are going to use this tube mm-hmm. and you can control a lot of things so for now we are using the slice of the letter f 
Wow, that was fast. Yeah. Okay. So we will make sure that we have uh, more subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So when we're rendering, it's going to be smooth enough. And for now, I'm going to duplicate this shape with an instance. So when I move something on the top, it will in impact also the second one. Okay, so there are there are two views that usually get in 3D. The, there is a perspective, but I always look for the uh, for the the one that has that that has not this kind of angles. You know, I always look for the graphic design uh, view. Mm -hmm. like this one, I go from graphic design and look in that way like this mm -hmm. and for now i'm moving and getting this letter f as you can see and also the height and and the and the width of the shape so now i'm making the rectangle here so we, we are going to make sure that we have more simple shapes in this. Okay. And uh, we'll make the dimensions of the artwork. Some rendering settings. How big do you typically render these images at? Excuse me? How big do you usually render the images at? Uh, usually they, they don't take long because I don't have uh, reflection and all the kind of stuff that will lower the speed of the rendering. We can see it now. I'm just making the, the, the poster, the dimension of the poster. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing the doing the post you now. While you're doing that, Jonah, did you notice that Nerdle's um, microphone got a little muffled? What happened there? He might be talking closer to the computer or something. Something is up with your audio, Nerdle. Okay, it's better now. Yeah, it's better there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are the dimensions of the render? That's what I was asking you. Yeah, the, the dimensions are 1,200 with uh -huh. 1,600. OK. They are pixels. Mm-hmm. Pixel dimension. But not gigantic. And basically, uh, for now, I, we will just make a test render to see mm -hmm. what we are doing. So we'll, we'll go through the rendering settings. There are some presets like interior and studio setup. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll just pick interior for now. Now, did you set up lights already or they're just default lights? And I, I usually set up lights. We're going to set up the lighting now. I see. And for the lighting that I usually have, is positioned on the top of the shapes. Like for this one is positioned on the right top. So always, always is on the top side, the lighting of the shapes. Mm -hmm. This one, as you can see. So I we're going to- You're saying now. We're going to position the lighting there. Mm -hmm. So this is the light. And we're going to set up the, the base where this shape is going to stand. This one. 
Is that a big I area light that you're using? What? Is that a big area light? Uh, no, no. There's no any other light than this one that I put right now. Yeah, but what kind of light is that? This is a light from V-Ray. Uh -huh. It is uh, V-Ray. This plugin has its own lights. So this is the light, uh, normal light with normal. Lift and light. Yeah, V-Ray light. So we have some other lights as well, mm -hmm. but they are for interiors, lighting, and all this stuff. <clears throat> okay, so we can hit the render just to see what we are doing. Ooh. I'm sorry. Is this a ray trace image? Yeah, this is... Uh, Probably the render is taking a long. I'm going to reduce the set some settings. Mm -hmm. What about the material that you're using, the shader for the object itself? Is there anything yeah. that you're using that's custom? Yeah, for now, the material is not set up yet. So I see. It's kind okay. of, it, it is a shade without material for now. Mm -hmm. It has just the color, but later on we are going to implement the V-Ray material. This is going to look better. I see. Okay, so I'm reducing some of the rendering settings. Okay, people on the internet on YouTube are saying they're having a hard time hearing you right now. So we want to be able to hear you. So either you say it and I can repeat it or Maybe we somehow change something because we want to make sure people can hear you. What do you think we should try? Are you hearing me now? I can hear you okay. Sometimes it gets a little muffled for some reason. I can't figure out why that's happening. And if not, then we go back to the earpods and deal with a little feedback. But yeah, we can try. It. Okay. Earpods. Okay. Okay, so Gory is uh, Gory TV is asking what software is this? He's using 3D Studio Max. He's running this on a PC and he's rendering it using V-Ray. So for all of the people who are checking out the technical specs there, that's what we're doing. He's used some very primitive shapes, uh, one one light, one normal light, and we haven't done anything with shaders or anything yet. And he's just doing some quick tests. Yeah. So for now, I'm decreasing the the light intensity. Mm-hmm. Because it's blown out up there, huh? Yeah, it's blown out. Yeah. And there's no ambient light right now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people are asking, what kind of computer are you using? Actually, now I'm in my MacBook using Windows, as you can see. Oh, my God. You're using a MacBook running Windows? <laughs> yeah. And I've never heard of that. <laughs> Very few people actually do that. Wow. Okay. So you're running some kind of PC emulator software to be able to run 3D Studio Max? Yeah. It's I'm using Bootcamp. Uh huh. So it's it's not parallel desktop. It's it's uh, installed basically on the okay. From the beginning. Do you typically use the Macintosh for your work? Uh, no, Macintosh I use only for browsing and stuff. <laughs> and lately I lately yeah. lately I got this touch bar and this laptop. Yeah. Yes. And but for now the Windows, the touch bar is not working. So it's just the function keys. I see. Okay. Maybe, maybe later we'll, we'll that. that was a burn right there, guys, for all you Apple fans. That was such a burn. He only uses the Mac because it's so underpowered <laughs> just for surfing yeah. the web <laughs> and the touch strip. Okay. okay, so this is the thing with the exposure that you do. So this is the trick that you remove the highlight burn. Have you seen that? No, oh, okay, show it to me again. Ooh. What is that slider? Because I can't really see. My eyes are not that good. I'm kind of old here. What's the slider? This is the exposure uh, settings. It's kind of mini Photoshop on the, on the previous Max. So oh, neat. These settings. You can control the human saturation and stuff. Wow. 
Okay. Okay. Hold on. The audio <laughs> it got a little bit better, but now it's like really staticky with some pops on it. My goodness, we're struggling with audio today, guys. Hang in there. We're gonna get him to watch him work here, and I'll try my best to explain what what Nertel is saying to us. Um, but hopefully the the mic improves here. So he's adjusting the exposure setting inside of 3D okay. Studio Max, and it's similar to the way that Photoshop works. So he was able to get rid of the hot spot. And you can change the hue and the saturation and do a bunch of things in there. Yeah, they're saying the audio is a little crackly. Seeing this render is so satisfying. Isn't it, Jonah? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't, he just got started too. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's put some materials. Oh, okay, the audio is unusual. Let's see. Start seeing that. So basically, I'm opening the material editor. Nerto, uh, maybe you can disconnect the the AirPods. Uh, it's now you sound like a robot, like um, IG88 or somebody. Is better now? No, it's horrible. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. We can't oh, hear. No, no. Now it's the noise of the render. No, it's still, it's not that noise. It's like you sound like you're underwater in a computer transmitting from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't you say something again? Let's see if it's uh, any better. No. 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 Hang in there, guys. Hold on. We're going to work out this audio. <laughs> People are saying R2D2. No, it sounds more like IG88, right? Or that probe, the probe in Empire Strikes Back when it's like. Brush, brush, brush. Is that no. Oh, this is some pretty cool, like Lucas, uh, what is that called? Uh, THX sound effects here. Skywalker Studio sound effects built in. Do you see that? <laughs> I'm going to try to remain upbeat here as we're trying to work through this technical challenge, guys. They're saying plug it in. Somebody's like, I'm not buying a Mac after this. That's not the problem. Everybody here runs a Macintosh, including me. My audio sounds fine. Okay, RJ is saying leave the Zoom and then come back again. It's better, it's better now. No, it's not. This is like, um, is that the Verizon commercial? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? It's terrible. Okay, so let's try this, Naruto. Why don't you uh, leave the Zoom and come right back and see if that will help. Somebody's suggesting that. And we'll try that. We'll try anything because we got to hear you. And I'm, I'm like getting really into this and we can't hear you. So let's let's step out and let's try it one more time, okay? Or I could just try and guess at everything that you're doing <laughs> right for you. <laughs> there you go. No. Okay, so guys, hang tight. I'm going to go back to my deck then maybe, Jonah. Yep. No, you know what? Let's look at his work. That's what I wanted to do. Let's do that. So if you guys go to deepyellow.net while we're waiting for Nerto to come back, uh, this is uh, an identity system that he did. Wow. It's really nice stuff. Just with such simple shapes too. Hence, deep shape. It's not a shallow shape, Jonah. Deep shape. It's a deep shape. Very deep. Philosophical. Isn't that awesome? So let me go back to his work. So you guys can go and check out his website. But you know what? I'm going to show you the mock-ups. I think the two latest mock-ups are missing a preview or something. But there are a bunch of mock-ups here that you guys can download and use for free. That's it. Hundreds of thousands of people have already done it. So here's the five poster mock-up, I think. Uh-huh. Look at that. Nice. Yep. Super easy to use. Take your posters. There's a lot of missing images for some reason. Or maybe that's just my computer. I am running this on a Mac, guys. Yeah, so you know. man. <laughs> it doesn't have a good reputation right now. <laughs> well, 
Or does it? Everything that's on our side is working just fine. Thanks. Yes, indeed. Here's another project. A little UI UX going on here. Oh, uh, there's the architectural in influence there, right there. Look at that. Look at that image. Mm. It all makes sense now. And Jonah, you're monitoring to see if he can get in. Is he like in the? There he is. Yeah, he's hello. Made. Waiting for him to unmute. All right. Are you hearing me now? Oh, okay. Say again. Are you hearing me now? Test oh. one, two, three. No, it's peaking. Maybe it's your your mic setting is just too hot. Can you adjust the mic setting? Yeah. Okay. So adjust it down, maybe, so it doesn't clip. It's peaking. That's all it is. But we're glad that we can hear you again. Okay. There we go. Did you do it? It's getting warmer. It's getting better. It's getting better, right? Oh, and then it peaks. I don't know why. And now it is better. Still hot. A little hot. A little hot. I don't know why. No. Oh, too low. No, it's too low. But I still hear that crispiness, that crackling sound. It is better now. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was that some hurt. straight up Star Wars sound effect, right? Yeah. There. <laughs> Someone shot the gun. <laughs> okay. We know who to call if we need some uh, Skywalker sound effects. Yeah, they so. were just on Zoom getting these sound effects. You are hearing me now, right? Yes, we can hear you All again. Right. Yes. Okay. Let's keep on going right. the show before everything breaks again. We can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yes, it's actually the clearest we've been able to hear you so far. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. We're talking to Nerto Muhajiri, and uh, he's uh, better known as Deep Shape on Instagram. We're back. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Whew. I'm a little sweat here, but uh, we're, we're okay. Okay, we will continue uh, yeah. with the materials for the poster, and we will pick some colors. So this is basically the V-Ray material. So yes. the materials of the V-Ray plugin. Mm -hmm. and we are using the V-Ray basic material and we will uh, put a lighter gray and we'll just drag and drop on the shape. And we'll create another material for the background. Okay with the blue color of the future. Of course. Now, are, are these shaders part of the V-Ray package or are these ones you, you built? Uh, they are part of the V-Ray. I see. And is there a name for the shaders you're using? Uh, shaders are, they don't have a name or something, but they are V-Ray. Okay. They have V-Ray settings. Mm -hmm. So we are playing here and the rendering is fast enough just to give us more uh, room for change and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool life, right? Yeah, it's looking good already. Okay, so you asked me before that do we use the ambient lighting? So I don't use uh, ambient lighting, I use only the lighting or the lights that are inside the uh, scene. Okay. So for now, I'm going to create another light in the opposite side. Right. But not instance. So whatever, whatever you copy on the 3ds Max, you have these options to, when you make it instance, you change uh, both of them. So I'm just creating the copy because the intensity will be more lower so this is the opposite lighting and i'm making sure that is invisible and decreasing the intensity mm -hmm. 10 times perhaps and for now i'm using this world view on the top of the screen mm -hmm. that you have this this direction so i don't use cameras i use this uh, this globe of of orientation. I have exact 45 degree angle. I see. Yeah. And now we will, we will test and see how it looks. 
But usually when I design shapes, I, I go back to my Instagram and see the colors. So I will not go too saturated or different in style. So we'll see what we are doing. So we can control also the saturation mm -hmm. with the thing here. So it's better. It's more like, can you see now it's better? Yeah. But maybe we'll go out of guidelines, but we will see that. For now, yeah, this needs a little bit contrast. I'm changing the background just to see. This is better, right? Yes. Okay, we'll see the same result with the inverse of color. So I'm multiplying all the stuff. So we have these poster scenes here and here. And we'll see the difference. So you duplicated the geometry in the scene, and now you're going to try some yeah. color variations? Yeah. OK. They will not impact. So we can see how they look, actually, in this look. They look great, right? Mm hmm OK. Uh, let's put materials here. So we have we have the opposite. Mm hmm You just swap the colors? Yeah. Mm hmm You know what, Jonah? I think seeing this process is the visual equivalent to ASMR. Definitely. Definitely. Now we just need some ASMR. Okay, Jonah. Okay, <laughs> well, we will jump on other views. So we are almost finished with uh, with this perspective of, of the shape, and we will continue to explore more angles mm -hmm. for this one. You know, it's really nice when you see the color bleeding and bouncing back to each other. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, now uh, we will try to, to make the opposite view. Now we were here, we're going to be there, right? It's the same, it's the same shape, but different angle. Oh. Let's move to that. Now, have you linked the lights to the geometry so that they don't affect each other? Uh, no. No, okay. Because they, they are not that near to each other. Hmm. They will not affect each other. The, the intensity is very low. We have the, some of the funniest fans that are watching. They're like, ASMR, we need a separate YouTube channel. And uh, somebody's saying, stop it, you creeps. And somebody else is saying, please whisper to me, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else that has no idea what ASMR is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google that for you. So I'm rotating this. Okay. This is the view that mm. we are going to take. So we don't have these 
these uh, rectangles with different different view. Mm -hmm. So we are moving now on the dim dimensions and the axis. We'll move also the lightings. Right, because you like the lighting on top, right? Yeah. And we'll see now. As you can see now, the light is blocking the scene. Mm -hmm. I make, I'm making the light invisible. This is going to be the 200 poster that I'm going to post on Deep Shape Instagram. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We have 199. 200. So it's a special moment, Jonah. As you can see here, I always uh, look for these differences on colors and shapes. These highlights. So everybody who's joining us right now, you're late to the party, but we're talking to Nerto Muhajiri. And he's also known, better known as Deep Shape on Instagram. The software he's using is 3D Studio Max, and he's using that in combination with V-Ray, showing us his creative process. And by the time we're done with this today, this is going to be up on his Instagram account. So I hope you're enjoying this. Okay, now we are going to try something different. You know, when you inverted it, it looks a little, it feels a little like Facebook now all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to rotate this shape on a different view. <laughs> Lioness Lilo is saying he uh, looked at the or she looked at the price of Autodesk and my purse made the windows shut down noise. <laughs> <laughs> 3D Studio Max is not cheap. It's a very powerful piece of 3D software. Yeah, and for the Mac users. It is Maya code, the Autodesk Maya. Mm -hmm. Same for the Mac users. Yeah, you can use Maya. You can also use Cinema 4D. There's a there's a bunch of options out there. Some somebody was wondering, can I do this in Adobe Dimensions? Now that would be a feat. I'd like to see that. Okay, I'm removing the background, and I I want to do something challenging here uh, I'm uh, trying to to have one shape in this view and the other on the other view that we have so we have two perspectives okay two perspectives we two. yeah we have this one mm -hmm. and we have the other one that is from this perspective okay we're going to have one from this and one from the other one. So I'm just trying to, to, to make that. Hmm. All right. So while Nortel is setting that up, MJ is asking me, uh, are you just as happy in your normal life? I think I am. I think I am. Jonah, would you agree or disagree? I would. 
<laughs> I have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice but to agree. <laughs> you, sir, are correct. <laughs> you can be more right. So Mark Anthony is saying he thinks he can do this in dimensions too. And I, I know Adobe's made some significant progress with Adobe Dimensions, and I'd love to see you do it. So that's a challenge for you, Mark Anthony. When you figure it out, please let us know. And we'll have you on the show of a conversation. Yes. Yeah, so this is the difference that I wanted to, to make. So as you can see, now the shape is I'm using two views. Look. Oh, I see, I see, I see. You're blending them together. I got it. Yeah. So one's laying down, one's kind of standing up. Yeah, it's more it's more complicated oh, than cool. this one before. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how it looks. All right. While you're doing that, I have to ask you this question. How often do you post something on Instagram? Uh, in the beginning, I post it. I try to post daily, but later on, I, I post it one into three or four days. Mm -hmm. But later on, I reduced the intensity because I started working more on other projects. And now, I'm doing, I'm back again and posting more. I see. That sounds fairly typical of creatives on Instagram. At first, you, you have to develop a habit, post very frequently to kind of learn how to do this stuff and build an audience. And at some point, you start to pace out your posting to every once in a while, every few days. And, and it sounded like you got really busy with client work, but now you're back. You're back. Yeah. Now, now it, it's even interesting because I got the deep shape. So this is a free time project that I work. And later on, uh, companies starting to contact me to uh, present their, their ideas. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an illustrative service now. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, something interesting is happening here by tilting and floating some of the shapes up off the, the ground plane. You're creating cast shadows, and you're also allowing light to sneak under and bounce off the bottom. Yeah. Really neat. Yeah. How long does it take you to make one of these, typically? Uh, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes one hour, two hour, maybe sometimes never. I just leave it and do something else. And also making them tilted like this creates this frozen moment in time. It feels like something was tumbling or falling and then you just stopped it. And yeah. then there's that moment. I like it. Okay. It's looking nice. Mm -hmm. But still we have some lower intensity colors. Maybe we need more light. All right. But we'll continue to develop more. So we have two or three views now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this comment from Mihai. He's like, for people who are interested in doing 3D for free or can't afford the software packages, use Blender, which is an open source. And obviously, you would have to invest in a great computer. But if you keep your, your object simple, like what you're doing right now, because you should be able to manage this on almost any kind of computer. Uh, the idea is that the shapes are very simple, so you can do with a lot of 3D software, actually. So you just need the, the knowledge where to put lighting and stuff. Yes. So as you can see, I'm always sticking to one light position. Mm -hmm. But it's not that for every shape this light works. So for, for some shapes, you just need to to position the lighting in another angle. Right, right. Like, okay, so there's a question here from Jer. He's asking, is it hard to make the jump, I think, from architecture to graphic design? Do they take you uh, seriously as a graphic designer having studied another discipline? Uh, 
as I said before, I was working design simultaneously while I was studying, but uh, later on I was introduced by some uh, typography and script design in the 50s. And I, I remember watching the Vectica documentary. So I was introduced more into graphic design. So I kind of fell in love with graphic design. And Jonah, were you able to hear all of that? That was kind of hard to hear. I wasn't. I didn't make it out too well. Okay. So you said you were introduced to graphic design by something and then we couldn't, I don't know why, but yeah. the audio started out good and then it just got really muffled then. Go ahead. Can you hear now? Yes, I think so. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to, to increase my voice. Okay, as I said before, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, in, the, in the time that I was studying, I got a job as a web designer and starting uh, exploring ideas and, and uh, the design techniques. So I was more involved into graphic design and I kind of fell in love with graphic design in that time and I was also making money easily with graphic design and this was the, the this, this one was the main idea to jump in to graphic mm -hmm. design. So it sounds like it wasn't that difficult for you to switch over. Not, not that much. Yeah. But usually I miss a bit architecture. Right. So I do want to share this with our audience. Once you learn how to design something, you should be able to design everything. So yeah. you can take the same principles of scale, form, balance, contrast, repetition, and take them into different disciplines. Of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve, obviously, but that's what it means to be a good designer. You should be able to design anything. Yeah, and also, and also what I did was I just connected the dots, the knowledge that I had earlier with graphic design mm -hmm. and uh, with a 3ds Max. So I just used that knowledge and combining these, these things. Okay, so Payush is asking, wait, is this the Future Academy? Why are you guys live on this channel? Okay, so Payush, welcome to the Future Academy. We have not just one, but we have two channels. One is dedicated to just featuring artists like uh, Nerto, and we, we cover things like logo design, typography, rendering, retouching, whatever it is that's creative. The main channel is for the business mindset stuff, okay? So just so you know. We are just trying different thing here. Okay, so we're stepping away from the original shape and composition and you're mirroring them. Yeah, up. we have this form in the middle, as you can see. Mm -hmm. We'll just let's see how it looks, this one. Yeah, okay, so I, I know I'm dating myself here, but when I got to school in 1995, the 3D programs and the software and the rendering was not what it is today, not even close. So the reason why I mentioned the color bleeding into each other because you guys take it for granted today that the software does that for you. But back in the day, we'd have to kind of figure out tricks and add spotlights to create the color spill, the, the color bouncing back and forth to create more believable, realistic renderings. So you guys have it good now, is what I'm saying. Because back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's easy. It, now now it's about the artist, right? It's less about the tools and it's about the artist. Like what what kind of what do you want to say? What how do you want to express yourself? And these little adjustments that you're making is through the eyes of an artist. Yeah. And I like what that. I do, what I do uh, sometimes. I remove the shadow from the base mater base material, mm -hmm. like from this white background. I just hit properties and remove the shadow, so this will not get the shadow. So the shape will be floating. This will make it more graphic design. Mm. 
Like I have some like uh, like this one, for example. Yeah. Mm. Gosh, it's such a shame that we don't have an awesome mic for you because uh, we're missing so much of like what you're saying. And, but I'm still just entranced, mesmerized by the visuals that you're creating right now. Same. <laughs> right? So we're going to power through this, everybody. Hang in there with us. It's so good. Jonah, are you going to learn a 3D program after this? Dude, I want to learn C C4D after this. You should. Yes. It's included in the Adobe Creative Cloud. Oh. Yeah. Okay, this one is nice too. I mean, I want to learn 3D again. again, so this is uh, it's very exciting. It's not that hard. Hmm. So what are you doing now? Now I'm exploring another angle. Mm hmm. Is this fairly typical for you to do this, where you have an initial idea and you try angles, yeah, yeah. mirroring objects, changing things, floating things? Okay. Yeah. So how do you decide which one you want to use? I don't know. The, I decide which one is better with the unique uniqueness of the shapes. So I always see the the geometry like. If it has more simple shapes, I keep it. Like for this one, we'll try just to connect these surfaces and do it as one. So we can control this, as you can see. Okay. Uh, there's some debate here as to whether or not uh, Cinema 4D is included in Adobe Creative Cloud. Cinema 4D Lite is included as far as I know. Double check, guys. Somebody tell me. C4D Lite, which is everything that you need to do what Nertil is doing right now. Ah. Now she is saying it is included. Now I'm trying to to get some F first letter F lines, but still is going to look more like S. Mm -hmm. Let's try get the shadows back. I'm okay. on the edge of my seat here, waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> waiting with bated breath. We will try something here. We will remove the, some polygons and go into inside of the shape. I see you have some of the prints in the background there. Those are huge. Yeah. So are those nice. special size, or the, can you, we order those from Redbubble that same size? Yeah, you can re, you can order them from Redbubble. Mm. And I think they're printed on canvas, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's see, my, Jonah. My battery is lighting. Uh oh, something happened. All right. Let's get back to the lighting. Okay. What's the design in the creative scene in Pristina, Kosovo? Uh, we have a lot of agencies here, mm -hmm. a lot of designers and developers. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, for the country, that we are small, but we have a lot of creatives here. Hmm. That's cool. At first, when I heard you say that, I thought you said we have a lot of Asians here. <laughs> I was like, really? I didn't know. <laughs> a lot of agencies. <laughs> All right. 
So how many more of these will you do before we jump into Photoshop? Uh, maybe we are at the ending. We are at the ending of the exploration. Okay. And we're also, the audio is <laughs> junking out on us again. Can you say something again? You might have to like log in and log back out again. I don't Okay, you're not hearing me, right? Yeah, something is jacked up again with the audio. I don't know what is going on. That Macintosh is not our friend today. Or maybe because it's rebelling against the PC emulator. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the exploration here in 3D Studio Max for everybody that's tuning in late. And we're going to probably be making this transition pretty soon to Photoshop. It may require us to bounce out of Zoom once more and come back so we can hear Nerto as he speaks. But okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. And uh, Jonah and I will entertain the masses while we wait for you to come back. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is uh, the first time we've ever had something like this happen, Jonah. In, in times like this, what do you suggest we do, Jonah? We read some of the comments and do some more ASMR. We can do that. <laughs> the return of the robot voice, yes. All right. Well, you guys have some questions, go ahead and drop it in the comments. And we have this rare moment where I'm able to talk to you a little bit more than, uh, than I am usually because our guest has to leave and then rejoin us in a second. Do you really like to say some more stuff, Jonah? I think I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All I have is a mouse click. <laughs> it it causes uh, the hair to rise for uh, on people's necks sometimes. It's called ear tingle, apparently. Oh wow! Yeah, so they want us to do a a course on topography using ASMR. Oh yeah, I saw that coming. Oh, wow. Yeah, while well, we creep everybody else out. What you say? <laughs> 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 Let me take a drink of water. Ah, oh, man. Pushing. Could you hear that, Jonah? Yeah, I could. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we'll stop. We'll stop. People are going to leave. <laughs> we apologize. <laughs> Right, he's back. They're like, no, we're trying to entertain you guys. All right, what can what can we do? Is Nertel back? Coming back. All right, so unmute yourself. We, ooh, interesting. Are you hearing me now? We are. I think we're good. Like every time you come back, we're good for like twenty minutes, and then we're yeah. Again. I have a limited time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you okay. were face of the of the F's, right? Yeah. They're hollow now. Oh, no. They're like cookie cutters. Okay. So, for now, we are going to make the final renderings of the, all of the forms that we had. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the first one and make it final. Yep. And I think you said 1,200 by 1,600? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's see how, how our little Macintosh computer is going to hold up here. <laughs> you said that normally you work on a PC though, right? Yeah. And what kind of PC do you use? Give us the specs. I, ha I had a, a Dell Precision, like workstation, mm -hmm. laptop, and before that laptop, I had an iMac. Oh. Again, with Windows on it. And I'm going to guess that the, not, the Dell was... It's not, I need, it's not that I need big, powerful computers for this right. one game. Okay. One down. Yeah. We'll save this. Mm-hmm. So that render did not take that long. 
That was only like a minute yeah. to render that. So, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see and do with the uh, different materials. Mm -hmm. All right, while he's doing that, let me just check the comments and see what everybody's thinking or saying. People are saying this is the funniest and edu most educational stream ever. <laughs> <laughs> we have to improvise. The show must go on, as they say. All right, so people want me to answer questions now, huh? Jono, what's a good question? Oh, man. I am not looking. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Jesse's asking, what is the biggest poster design trend in 2020? I'm not going to answer that question. I've asked it because why do we worry about trends and what's the importance of it? Once you recognize that a trend is here, it's already too late. Just do what you think you like. Make something that you feel happy to do every single day. Christina is asking, Chris, are you still designing? And what do you enjoy the most? I do design but not as much as I used to. And I mostly just make the thumbnails or I help out with the critiques. That's the extent of what I design in terms of hands-on because we don't do client work anymore. I think this one is the best. You like this one the best? Yeah. So it has two, two types of positioning of the shapes. Mm -hmm. More unique, I could say. But you can see these two. Uh, some some people missed it, but they were asking, "What did you do with the last shape?" And I think what happened was you removed the faces of the form, so you can see. Yeah, the... I removed. Yeah, I removed these surfaces. Mm -hmm. And Man, I got the the... Are so clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's taking a bit time. Nice. Okay, just remove the highlight there. That's a number two rendering in the can. Number three. Oh, number three. I'm sorry. Number three. Yeah. Oh. And we, we also had this one that has this position. Mm -hmm. This was interesting. This one. I like that one. That okay, Pitash Kura. Sorry, go ahead. With shadows, because I did remove the shadows. Mm. I'm did you learn cinema? Uh, I'm sorry. Did you learn 3D Studio Max while in school or on your own? On on my own. Mm. Uh, as I was in the ninth grade, I was making renderings, interiors. Mm. I wanted to make the interiors look like. I see. Real. Yeah. It always looks so much nicer when you take a design and you actually render it out this way. I do like also this one. Mm -hmm. Do you know the director, Joseph Kaczynski? I think that's his name. No. He directed Tron, the remake, the reboot. He was an architect. Wow. And really? Yeah, he was an architect and he started doing really beautiful, hyper real 3D renderings of environments. And I think as he was exploring that, he started moving the camera around and then he would composite people in it and eventually got picked up by 
Anonymous Pictures, which is uh, David Fincher's production company. They started repping him for commercial work, and he wow. he got work. Um, he uh, came up with this concept for uh, the movie Oblivion with Tom Cruise in it. Yeah, yeah. I th I think his name is Joseph Kaczynski, but somebody check it out. So, if you take your passion and you start to move into where it crosses over into technology and tell interesting stories, there's no limit to where you can go. Yeah. So uh, somebody's asking, uh, Pitosh Kumra is asking, why did you stop doing client work? And we as a company elected to stop doing client work in December of 2018. Many of you guys who have been following our story know this about the company. And we decided to dedicate all our energy and effort, the entire staff, to make content for YouTube to help teach you guys. And it's come at a little bit of a financial uh, deficit for us uh, because we made most of our money doing client work up until then. But now, thankfully, many of you guys are supporting us by buying our products or clicking on affiliate links or just straight up donating money to us. So we appreciate that. We'd like to change the way we learn and teach forever. And I'm not just talking about us, but the entire education system. So we're investing every dollar every cent that we have into trying to innovate and create new learning models for all of you. I can't help but to say this every time it does these um, passes at the rendering, I love each little pass. Mm -hmm. So the ambient occlusion pass, the I don't know if it's caustics, but uh, all these little things that are happening, each and every pass looks so gorgeous. I think that's yeah. like a credit to the simplicity of the geometry and the way that you've lit the scene and just the way it's composed. Yeah, we also have this nice lightning here. Mm -hmm. I noticed but, when you created the shape, Nerto, that you didn't add a bevel to the edges. These are super sharp edges, right? Yeah, super sharp. Yeah. If we make them the width, and then we will have another element on the on the poster. Right. So we want less element possible. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting the, the, the shape inside. As you can see, yeah. I've lost some shadows there. Mm -hmm. Let's see the lightning is positioned. Okay. We'll move the lightning and see the difference. Okay, Modiak is asking, what PC do you recommend for design? What do you think? I don't know, but if you, if you work with Adobe Illustrator, maybe the Mac is, is the best option. Yes. MacBook Pro or something. But yeah. I work with Corel Draw and the core job lately is also on Mac, but wasn't. I see. Before. So the Windows was always better option for me. Mm -hmm. you, I, I don't know that many people that use Corel Draw. That's interesting. You're a yeah. Corel Draw guy, huh? Uh, most of the companies here in Kosovo, work, yeah. they work with Corel. I didn't know that. Interesting. So the the answer is whatever computer you can get your hands on. It doesn't matter. I think uh, I have this conversation with my kids. And they're always like, "Dad, there's like the new MacBook Pro with the touch strip and this and that," and they're going on and just 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 lusting after that computer. And I said, "Look, this four year old laptop that I have, I can do more creative work than you can with the fastest computer on the planet. It's not about the computer. The the machine works yeah, yeah. just fine." I know so many people who are amazing artists and you won't believe the antiquated technology that they're running it on. They use legacy software. Uh, Hydro 74, he uses like some old version of Adobe Illustrator, like like version five or something like that. He refuses the upgrade because he likes it just the way it is. He doesn't need anything more than that. And so a lot of times we can go around and chase the latest technology and the software, mostly because they're crutches for us because 
we don't know how to use the tools properly. We're relying on too many undos or, or fancy automatic processes. So just keep that in mind. And the way that this can crystallize for you is that the, the camera never made the photographer. The, the artist makes the tool. It's not the other way around. The tool does not make the artist. So you can give a camera and all different kinds of power and technology to a hundred different people who are untrained and the true professional photographer will still outbeat them all because they're looking at light, they're looking at composition. They know how to make their subject matter feel at ease or they just know that at this time of day they need to be in this position and they're going to wait for that shot. So there are many famous photographers too who shoot on really old and antiquated yes. technology. You can, you can beat the photographer with a Photoshop like without going out and taking the images you know mm -hmm. you can create the scene mm -hmm. and do it in in photoshop and manipulating stuff and beating the photographer for example it's not that it's not the the object that you use but it's the idea that you have so if you have one idea to implement it today it's very easy if you have the right subjects Right. So you're making adjustments to lighting right now so that you can see the forms because you're still losing. Yeah. Now you brought the bottom shape in. I can see that very clearly yeah. now. Yeah, we have nice. some great photos here. Yeah. We are seeing nice cash on those. Ambient yeah. occlusion going on maybe. Are you turning on an AO? Uh, or no? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, you see these dirts here? Mm -hmm. Maybe this one I will uh, use Photoshop to uh -huh. fix those. So I use mostly Photoshop for editing and stuff. Mm -hmm. and so now I notice you're also going in and adjusting exposure and all that. I, I want to be mindful of time here. We want to be able to see this completed. So we're at 12, 16 and due to some unfortunate technical challenges that we're having. Uh, Nerto is working on his fourth render, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We'll the open, open face one. We'll open the Instagram and then the Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And we'll go to Instagram and see how the shape will look with other stuff. Mm -hmm. Joan, I'm not going to lie. We're seeing white on white like that. It's just so nice. Yeah. Okay, I think we will use this one, this one, All this right. and the last one. Mm. All right. Or we will use all of them. <laughs> okay, a lot of people ask me for the typeface. So yes. Those are two questions. What software do you use and what typeface? I use uh, GT Wildshine. It's a typeface that I've chosen because of the clean lines that has for numbers. Mm -hmm. Really great numbers. Okay. So this is my typeface that I use. Mm -hmm. So I, I notice in the shape here, the one that you've got up, it's got some twists to it. And do you take a basic shape and deform it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll use bend and twist. Bend and These twist. are That's... basic, basic uh, modifiers. Mm -hmm. Like you bend it or, or twist it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll go and put into frame. There it is. Mm. Mm. Let's try something here. <laughs> hey. 
Have you printed 3D uh, models before of your designs? Uh, no, lately I, I started. Not from the beginning. Mm. So. I think some of them could make like really cool sculptures for the desk or something. I don't know. Definitely. <laughs> Look at Jonah. <laughs> Dude, I'm drooling over this. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you to learn Cinema 4D by Monday, Jonah. It is a three-day weekend. It is. Plenty of time. I do appreciate also that you've mentioned it on your Instagram live or feed that, or and changed the link for this thing. And that's really cool. Yeah, I yeah. wish more artists that came on our show helped us to promote and to bring their audience in and watch as well. Yeah. What are you doing now? I'm exporting the final design to be published in Instagram. Mm -hmm. so, I'm just saving as a JPEG. Is this process that you shared with us any different than how you would do it if nobody was watching? Yeah, it is the same process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do it quickly. Sometimes it takes a long time to get the, the shape. But this is basically the whole process, like trying to get the right angle, right lighting, uh, getting the right shadows. Now you're going to try one of the other renders? Yeah. Do you know yet which one is your favorite render? Uh, my favorite is one that is not rendered. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is made in Corel. Like oh, really? In, in Illustrator. Oh. Neat. Yeah. So people were asking that question of whether or not this could be done using Photoshop or Illustrator. And apparently it can be, if you, understand, yeah. if you know the principles. Some shapes can be done with vector subjects. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've seen people do photo real illustrations using Illustrator, all vector art, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, look it's at this. Look at this. Two hundred and twenty color graphics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I saved this. You saved two already? Yeah. And we have these two. Will you post this as a carousel? Yeah. Oh. Nice. This one is really nice. Mm. But maybe we can play a little bit with the contrast. this so you added a little so, contrast there to blow out the white yeah, you know is is highlighted here with mm -hmm. white and i will um, add another layer and fill that with gray color are you working in 8-bit color here, just out of curiosity? What colors? Are you working in 8-bit color? Or are you doing 16 point, oh, what is it, 16 bit floating or any of these other fancy? 8-bit. 8-bit, yeah. 
Okay, so we use multiply and decrease the intensity like this. Oh. What did you say, Jonah? Oh, can you speak up a little bit? Yeah. There we go. So I remove that highlight. Yep. This is better. Mm -hmm. So this is how it was without Photoshop. You kind of removed a highlight and then you painted in the gray yeah. to flatten it back out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is number three, and we have. And the last one. Something about this. It's like white yeah. paper on a white background. So crisp, so sharp. So we'll post this separately. Mm. Ooh. So now how are you going to fix this? Stamp? Yeah. What is that error? I clicked something accidentally. Nice. Yeah. We will also re remove this highlight bar. Daya is saying it's a, le a one in the morning in Nepal and he's still here. As you can see here, Chris, I'm trying to create a difference here because I lost the the difference of the faces. Mm -hmm. Like they're blending together. So you want to create a little shadow there to separate the yeah. shape from the background, right? Mm -hmm. And let's see how you do this. You're going to paint it in with a brush or something else? Mm. Yeah, so I see. Mm -hmm. It will be lighter or darker? Maybe lighter. Maybe lighter or better. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yeah. These subtle little touches, guys. This is what it takes. Because straight out of the box, the geometry is doing something funny. And, of course, he's working pretty quickly to show us what his process. So he's not finessing every little light and angle just the way yeah. he might have. But sometimes it's just easier to go into Photoshop and retouch it. I think what you're doing here, Naruto, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're looking at the values to make sure there's good separation. Sometimes you go darker, sometimes you go lighter. Yeah. So that the planes read. We also have an issue with the shadow in the bottom of the shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With it. But it will take a long time to fix that because it's a, it's a bit difficult. Yeah. To go there. Yeah, we understand. Okay. So except that all yep. the shadows are perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe here we lost something. Okay, we are almost done here.
Ting Ting is saying it's 9.30 p.m. in Norway. Welcome. Okay. You are done, guys. All right. Beautiful job. Okay, so you're saying that uh, if you if uh, it'd take you a little longer time to uh, re finesse the shadow at the bottom there just to get the separation that you want, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, oh, you're doing a little bit more retouch there, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we are going to post three. Okay, so not this shape, the the first three. Yeah. What do you think? This one can be one post and these two separately. Excellent. Dig it. Okay. Apparently we have a bunch of people from India watching it and they're saying it's 1 a.m. <laughs> I, I can hear the audio clipping out here. So we're, <laughs> I think it's time for us to almost wrap up the show. It's Zoom saying no. we're done. We're we can't so take done. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing the limits of technology here is what we do at the future. Wow. Okay. Great job. Okay, so I guess when we all go and follow you on Instagram at Deep Shape, we'll be able to yeah, see. Yeah, I'll be posting this. Okay. All right. Uh, let me now switch over. Okay, so I'm going to take control here and share my screen and wrap us up here. All right. Let me get the screen ready. What am I doing? My brain's freezing here, guys. Let me share my screen. All right. Here we go. And all right. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this demo. I apologize for the audio and going in and out. I think there's some technical problems that hopefully won't happen to us in the future, but I do appreciate your patience. But most of all, I do appreciate Nerto for coming on the show. Uh, and I've been following him for quite some time, referenced his work on a couple occasions at least. And so I'm just so thrilled to have him on the show and share a little bit of his creative process. You guys can find more about him. If you're a client, go to deepyellow.net. You can find a bunch of things, including for designers as well, mockups that are totally free and you can download them there. And if you're a fan of his work and you want to hang a piece of artwork, a piece of canvas on your walls, I imagine Jonah's going to do this. Go to redbubble.com. We've already dropped the link in the comments, but we're going to do them below as well. So check the links below. This is who he is, Nerto Muhajiri, and he's at deepyellow.net and at Deep Shape. You can follow him on Instagram. Thank you so much for doing this, Jonah. Give us some music and let's get out of here. Don't forget, everybody, to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And you guys are all part of the one billion mission that we're on to teach people how to make a living doing what they love. Hashtag one B, one B minus one. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for supporting us. And those of you guys that are in a place that you can afford to do so and want to support us, drop us a donation at Venmo. This is Doe. I'm Chris. This is our nation. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs>